Hey, Broken Arrow. I'm Michael Spurgeon, and thanks for joining us for this edition of Broken Arrow in Motion. You know, I was just checking out the latest edition of the City's Focus newsletter. It's going to be coming to you in the mail very soon. There's some great stories in there. The first one that I wanted to mention was the story about how we make sure there's adequate water supply during the hot summer months. There's also information for folks that are interested about getting a permit for fireworks because 4th of July is just right around the corner. There's also some very important information that I want to point out about our Life Right program and how important that is for our community. And then the thing I like the most about this, on the back page there's information about how you can communicate with the city because there's so many different ways. So please be sure to check it out uh, when you receive it in the mail or you can look at it on the city's website. You know, there's been so much happening during the month of May, so let's get started with the update. First off, I want to thank everyone for their resilience during the COVID-19 pandemic. The strength and character our community has demonstrated during this unprecedented situation has been amazing. We know this situation has been tough on everyone, so on behalf of the Mayor and City Council, thank you for your support of the difficult decisions that we've had to make over the last couple of months. We are now working to reopen our great city safely and effectively and would appreciate your continued support as we work through these various phases. I'd like to mention that as we reopen, I believe it's extremely important to support local businesses. In my opinion, never has it been more important to shop local and help those that have made investments in our community get back on their feet. Finally, we have a weekly update for the community on the COVID-19 pandemic. Please go to our Facebook page to view the updates. Now, I'd like to provide updates on what's been happening during the month of May. Let's start with city projects. These initiatives help make our city even a better place to live, work, and play. First up, our Armed Forces Meeting Hall. The City Council and Veterans Board will finalize the name of the new facility this summer. With respect to the project, we have received the first draft of the construction documents and expect to begin construction in the September-October timeframe. The new $2 million facility will be used by the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the American Legion, Vietnam Veterans, the Military Order of the Purple Heart, and the Blue Star Mothers. The meeting hall will feature home offices for each of the veterans groups represented, including additional storage space for the Blue Star Mothers organization to keep materials for creating care packages for military personnel around the world. At more than 4,500 square feet, the building will have a conference room to accommodate the organizational meetings and a large banquet hall to host events for more than 80 people. And finally, included in the design is a catering kitchen to support events. It's going to be a fantastic facility for our veterans to congregate. Let me close this update out by mentioning how excited I am about the possibilities that this center will offer to our veterans and to thank all the veterans for their support and to the Broken Air voters for approving this initiative in the 2018 General Obligation Bond Package. Next up, the Challenger Sports Complex. The impact of the COVID-19 outbreak caused personnel and supply issues and construction on the new facility is about 30 days behind schedule. That's not too bad, actually. However, the concession stand structure is underway. The structure is dried in, the roofing truss are set, and the decking was installed last week. The final grading on the site is 90% complete, with irrigation and sod starting to go down throughout the park. The turf infield installation has begun, with the underground draining system installed on two of the four fields. Backstops and dugouts throughout the complex are about 90% complete. Honestly, folks, I can't wait to hear the words play ball later this summer. Now let's talk about fire station number three that's being built out on County Line Road. Very excited to provide this update to our community. The project is currently on track, but it has been impacted as of late by significant rainfall. The mass grading of this site is 90% complete, with the remainder of the grading to be completed later this summer. The building foundation is also finished, and the construction of the underground facilities is currently underway. Here's an update on the downtown project. I'm happy to report the first half of the Detroit Street project between 3rd and 9th Street is complete. The project included asphalt mill and overlay, and asphalt patching, and sidewalks along both sides of the street. The second part of the project, from 3rd to 1st Streets, is set to go under construction in the next couple of weeks and is similar in scope to the first half of the project. A drainage ditch will also be constructed on the north side of Detroit Street between 2nd and 3rd Streets. Finally, ADA ramps will be built at the street crossings. I'd like to thank all the residents in the area for their patience as we've completed and will complete the rest of the work. 
Let's talk about the Washington Street Widening Project. I know we've had a lot of interest in that project and I'm happy to report the contractors are installing storm sewer work around the Jackson Park area just east of Garnett. They are also completing the excavations north and south of the roadway between Olive Avenue and Garnett Road. The project should be completed according to the contractor by the end of the year. Also in Washington, contracts for intersection improvements at Aspen and Washington have been executed and the notice to proceed was issued on May 25th. This project consists of 4,100 yards of full depth pavement reconstruction, water line replacement, ADA ramp configurations, concrete curb replacement, signal work, and gutter replacement. I'm excited for this project to be completed because this intersection is in very bad shape. I want to thank the voters of Broken Air for approving the funding in the 2018 GEO bond package. Thank you, BA. Moving south, here's an update on the Florence Street widening project from Aspen to Olive. Street construction has started with the right-of-way clearing underway at the mid-mile section surrounding the installation of a new box culvert for storm sewer drainage. Water line, electrical, and storm water work is also underway throughout the project. The overall project is, is on track with phase one set to be completed before the start of school and the entire mile section should be completed by late this year. Moving into utility operations, as you may recall, the city partnered with HDR, an engineering firm, to conduct a pilot taste and odor study of our drinking water. The data gathering portion of the study was completed on May 8th. Now the city's water plant staff and the engineering firm are waiting for the final results from the samples gathered during that week. Once received, HDR will complete a draft and taste odor mitigation report by mid-June. The final report will contain the study results and the estimated costs for installing the recommended technologies for our water treatment facility. We are very excited about the fact that this study is near completion and look forward to seeing the recommendations. It's very important that we make sure that we have great drinking water for our community today, tomorrow, and into the future. And finally, regarding utilities, I want to let you know the Trunk Sewer Line Project on County Line Road is making great progress. This is a $16 million project that will replace an existing 27-inch gravity sanitary sewer line within the city. The southern section of the line is already installed from the city's water reclamation plant to just north of 131st Street. This month, pipe installation will also be completed from 131st Street to 121st Street. Additionally, the North Line section has been laid from the Creek Turnpike to north of 111th Street with the bore currently being installed on 114th Street. The project is on track to be completed in December of this year. Here's an update on economic development activities in the city. I'm excited to announce that work on the future site of the Creek 51 Business Park has made exceptional progress since the project broke ground back in October of 2019. Located at the southwest corner of the Creek Turnpike and Highway 51, Creek 51 will be a 90-acre business park offering manufacturing companies lots ready for construction. These developed sites for new businesses will mean more job opportunities for the people of Broken Arrow and the surrounding area. The aim of the Creek 51 is to attract companies in the clean manufacturing industry. Clean manufacturers are those that use as few non-renewable resources as possible while reducing waste and minimizing the environmental impact. The Creek 51 Business Park will be our city's first large business park in more than 30 years. It was developed with the help of a tax incremental financing district approved by the City Council late last year. Before I go, please continue the excellent work on the census. Currently, we are at a 72% response completion rate compared to only 53.4% for the entire state of Oklahoma. Once again, you're setting the standard, Broken Arrow. It is so crucial for each of us to be counted in this process. That's a wrap, folks. That's it for this edition of Broken Arrow in Motion. You know, for those that uh, follow my video series, know that I normally end all of my segments with the phrase, I look forward to seeing you around town. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I haven't been able to do that the last couple of months. And that's been hard on me because I love engaging with our community. I tell you, one of the best parts about my job is to be able to visit with citizens, with community leaders, business leaders about what's going on in a great city. I want feedback. I know the city council does it well. We need to hear that, that feedback so we can continue to make great decisions or right decisions that continue to move our community forward. So that's been hard on me. 
However, as we begin to start to reopen our community, I'm getting excited because we're starting to come together a little bit. I know that's only going to continue. So I've decided that for this segment, I'm going to end uh, my show with this segment. Continue to stay safe, Broken Arrow. I'll see you around town this summer.